Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper with a video about radio bands. We often hear people refer to radio frequencies or groups of frequencies by their wavelength designations, uh, the 40 meter band, the 20 meter band, or the 2 meter band, or the term 2 meter radio, which is a radio that operates in the 2 meter frequency band. But what does this all mean? What, what is a meter band and what is a wavelength? Well, the meter band is a measurement of a specific radio frequency's wavelength. And much like a drop of water in a puddle, radio waves radiate out from the transmitter in waves. And the wavelength is determined by measuring the distance between the two peaks. And at lower frequencies, there's greater distance between those two peaks, increasing the wavelength. And at lower, higher frequencies, the peaks are closer together, decreasing the wavelength. And where this is important to us as preppers, is that wavelength determines the length of the antenna when you're making an antenna or buying an antenna because a transmitter to be efficient has to have an antenna length that matches the frequency it's operating at so when you transmit that power out to the antenna the antenna is resonant and radiates that power out in the free space and doesn't reflect that power back to the radio heating it up and damaging the transmitter because an antenna that's not the right length will not resonate and that power will bounce back from the antenna back into the radio and cause heat and over time damage your radio. I have an older chart here, the radio frequency spectrum chart to help provide some perspective. In the middle on the left is a blue box and that's the audio frequency range, the spoken word, things we can hear with our ears. And to the right of that box is a red box for radio frequencies typically where prepper communications equipment operates and they expand that box out up above the chart but I've taken that and I've stripped out some stuff and tried to put things in there that are more relevant or recognizable to us as preppers so if you look on the left it starts off with the AM band like on your car radio and to the right of that you have the amateur radio or ham high frequency shortwave band and this is the band that allows for cross-country communications or communications between the United States and Europe where the radio waves will actually bounce off the atmosphere and I'll do a separate video about HF communications. Moving further up the band we're back into FM broadcast again which is the FM radio in your car and above that we enter into the VHF band where you find amateur radio operators using two meter equipment, two meter radios, repeaters. Uh, MERS is also in this VHF band and if you go a little bit above that you'll find amateur radio ultra high frequency or UHF and in this same area you'll also find FERS and GMRS radios that we're familiar with. So again a wavelength is the distance between the two peaks and this is relevant to us as preppers when it comes to selecting antennas for our transmitters. Now for an antenna to be resonant at one wavelength it's resonant but you can also chop that antenna up and have it still be resonant but it's less efficient but even though you're chopping it up it'll still radiate that power out in a free space and not cause reflective power so I've included two formulas on this slide so for half wavelength antenna if you were to make your own it would be 468 divided by frequency and that would give, it the, give you the length of the wire or antenna rod needed for that frequency at a half wavelength if that was too long, the formula below that is a quarter wavelength and you can get a little shorter antenna, a little bit less efficient, but it would still be resonant and not cause you reflective power into your transmitter. And I also highlighted this with the color codes up top. So the blue line represents a half wavelength and the green line represents a quarter wavelength. And here's another chart that gives you an idea because you've probably seen these antennas out there. Again, a full wavelength antenna. You've probably heard of a 5 eighths wavelength antenna, and again, a half and a quarter wavelength antenna. Each one of these lengths would still be a resonant antenna for a radio. So how would this relate to preppers? In this slide, I give an example of GMRS channel 1, frequency 462.550. And I have a little picture of my GMRS FRS radio in the top right-hand corner. And you can see that that little rubber antenna on the right hand side is pretty short about two and a half inches long and when you look at the math the signs behind it for truly cutting a proper antenna you can see it doesn't add up 
which gives you some insight to why FRS and GMRS radios don't necessarily have the range you would think they have because their performance has been compromised by an inefficient antenna. But unlike FRS radios, in the GMRS service, you can have an external antenna provided you have a radio that gives you a connector for it. And if you were to make your own antenna for GMRS, uh, the full wave formula 963 divided by the frequency, your antenna would be two feet long. And if that was too long for your application and you wanted a shorter antenna, you could go to a half wavelength and use the 468 divided by frequency formula and that would give you a one foot antenna. And if that antenna was too long for your operational requirements, you wanted something shorter but still resonant, still efficient, you could use 234 divided by frequency and have a quarter wave antenna and that would be just a little over half a foot long. Another thing to consider is dual band antennas and this applies really in the high frequency band and I'm using an example here of the 40 meter band, the 7 megahertz frequency for amateur radio operators and the 20 meter band for amateur radio operators and as you can see the lower frequency 7 megahertz the wavelength is 40 meters long so on the metric system if you had one wavelength antenna it would be 40 meters long cut the frequency in half because the wave the tips of the wavelengths are closer together the antenna gets cut in half to 20 meters so I'm going to give an example here on this next slide of a typical high frequency dipole antenna which is very common by ham radio operators and this antenna from tip to tip is about 65 feet long and that gives you an idea how long this wavelength is because how low these frequencies are so a CB radio for example is 27 megahertz so the whip antenna might be four feet long but if you go from 27 megahertz down to 14 the wavelength gets longer the antenna gets longer so this dipole here in this example is a full wavelength antenna made up of two halves, the left and the right side, each a half wavelength for 14.260 megahertz. And that would be a resonant antenna, an efficient antenna that would radiate all that power in the free space and cause no damaging reflected power to go back to the radio. But if you look below in the blue, it's also properly length as a quarter wavelength antenna for 7.130 megahertz in the 40 meter voice high frequency amateur radio band. So looking at the math you have one antenna that can operate on two bands that are separated by 20 meters of wavelength. So there's a significant difference in length but because we can use half wavelengths or quarter wavelengths or five wave five eighths wavelength antennas we can come up with different combinations of antennas for our radio equipment and if you're a prepper and you're thinking about getting into high frequency radio communications and I'll do a separate video about this later uh, this is something you want to look at when you're building your own antennas for your antenna for your go bag or your bug out bag or your your retreat location instead of having all these antennas everywhere if you sit down and pick the bands you're going to use and work out the math a little bit you can reduce the number of antennas you need so I'm going to go back here to the American Radio Relay League's amateur radio band chart and again I'll put a link down for this below and I hope this helps clarify this meter band designation that people assign to radio frequencies and how this relates to preppers and how this can be an advantage to preppers and as always thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel this has been the comms prepper